What's going on? It's Suk and I'm back with a brand new video on Super Duper Tech. And in today's video, I'll be showing you what it was like to play a handful of games on the brand new M3 powered 13 inch MacBook Air. We are on the road to 5,000 subscribers. So if you are new around here, then I must ask you to hit the subscribe button, clicking the bell to be notified of when a new video goes live. But without any further ado, let's hit the titles. So first things first, I do want to quickly mention the spec for the model that I am testing in today's video. This is the entry 13 inch MacBook Air, which means it comes with the M3 chip with an eight core CPU, an eight core GPU, eight gigabytes of unified memory, along with 256 gigabytes of SSD based storage. So buckle yourselves in because this is quite the list of games which I tried to play on this MacBook Air. So I played Battlefield 1, Battlefield 5, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Minecraft, League of Legends, Grand Theft Auto 5, CSGO, Firewatch, Fortnite, Hitman 2, CSGO 2, Cyberpunk 2077, Thief Simulator 2, Watch Dogs Legion, Halo, Overwatch 2, Resident Evil Village, Resident Evil 4, Watch Dogs 2, Hogwarts Legacy, Spider-Man Remastered, Spider-Man Mars Morales, Far Cry 6, Saints Row, Borderlands 2, Call of Duty Black Ops 3, The Witcher 3, X-Plane 11, Portal 1 and Portal 2, along with Modern Combat and Death Stranding. So I started off by playing these games at this MacBook Air's native resolution of 2560 by 1664 and I kept the graphics settings to high. So the only reason I play these games with high graphic settings, even though clearly some of these machines might not be designed to handle them, is so that we're able to squeeze out some more frames if we lower the graphic settings. But when playing at this resolution with this MacBook Air, the best performing game was clearly League of Legends, which was then followed up by Minecraft and then Fortnite, averaging 86, 83 and 56 frames per second respectively. When playing games at this resolution, quite a lot of them simply would not run or crash as soon as the resolution was increased. Now both Battlefield games, Battlefield 1 and 5 would not run at native resolution. Hitman 2 also would not run. Cyberpunk, Watch Dogs Legion, Overwatch 2, Watch Dogs 2, Hogwarts Legacy, both Spider-Man titles, Far Cry 6, along with The Witcher 3 would not run at this resolution which I think has more to do with this MacBook Air having an eight core GPU, as a handful of these games have been able to run on the other MacBook models, which have the M3 chip with a 10 core GPU. And no matter how many times I tried, Far Cry 6, both Spider-Man and both Watch Dogs titles, for some reason would not run on this MacBook Air. Every time I loaded Far Cry 6 and Watch Dogs Legion, it would just completely crash the MacBook. And whilst the Spider-Man titles would run, as you can see on screen, they just kept on flickering. And you've most likely taken a look at those graphs and seen that Death Stranding is not on them. And you'll be right for seeing this, as every single time I opened up Death Stranding, it kept on crashing with it saying that it had ran out of unified memory. So sure, if you want to play Death Stranding, then be sure to get a MacBook with more than 8GB of unified memory. So with these games not running at native resolution, I then decided to lower the resolution very slightly to 2560 by 1600, lowering the vertical resolution by a mere 64 pixels. And when playing games at this resolution, we can see that both Battlefield titles actually ran, with both of them averaging above 10 frames per second. Hitman 2 would still not run at this resolution. We still have League of Legends, Minecraft and Fortnite as the top three performing games. And Hitman 2, Cyberpunk, Watch Dogs Legion, Overwatch 2, Watch Dogs 2, Hogwarts Legacy, both Spider-Man titles, Far Cry 6 and The Witcher 3 would not run on this machine at this resolution. Both Portal games were very playable with them averaging over 50 frames per second. Black Ops 3 was also averaging 45 frames per second. Now I'd agree that all of the macOS native games were all pretty much playable at this resolution. Of course, we've got games like Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Firewatch, which had averaged less than 30 frames per second. But when it comes to games like CSGO, Fortnite, 
Resident Evil Village and Resident Evil 4, I can confirm that if you are looking to play these types of games, then at least at this resolution, you won't run into too many issues. So with there being a handful of games that were not able to run at that resolution of 2560 by 1600, I then decided to lower the resolution to 1920 by 1200, which is a full HD resolution at the aspect ratio of 16 by 10. So once I dropped the resolution, we can see that Hitman 2 was finally able to play with it now averaging 29 frames per second. Cyberpunk also ran at this resolution, although it only managed to average 20 frames per second, so it wasn't exactly the most thrilling experience of the day. And if you pair this average frame rate up with some graphics glitches, as you can clearly see, Cyberpunk is not a game that I would suggest playing on this MacBook Air. Just because it runs, doesn't mean you should. But there were a number of games that were able to saturate the 60Hz refresh rate of this MacBook Air's display. These games include Minecraft, League of Legends, CSGO, Fortnite. But I mean, these games have been able to run on MacBooks for many years, even at this resolution with very similar frame rates. So there's no surprises to be had here. And I'll be the first to say that it was a little disappointing to see how this MacBook Air performed especially compared to the entry MacBook Pro with its 10 core GPU. Now, interestingly enough, you can get this 13 inch MacBook Air with the 10 core GPU found in that MacBook Pro. And there's no coincidence that I also have the 15 inch MacBook Air model in, which has that 10 core GPU. So if you'd like to see how these MacBook Air models compare, then be sure to subscribe, clicking the bell icon to be notified of when a new video goes live. Now, of course, I'm not going to suggest to anyone to purchase an entry fanless laptop to go and play some games on, because as you can probably imagine, your experience across the board isn't going to be the best. Of course, when it comes to well-optimized games or games that aren't as intense, like League of Legends, Minecraft, CSGO, Fortnite, those kind of games that have been available on macOS for quite some time, your experience isn't going to be too bad. But when it comes to playing some of those AAA titles that were released even a few years ago through the means of crossover, you may still find yourself struggling, as you can see with the likes of Hogwarts Legacy and Cyberpunk 2077. It was still great to see both Resident Evil titles average above 60 frames per second at this lower resolution, but once again, I expected and at least hoped that we would get those kind of frame rates at least while playing at a full HD resolution. So after playing a number of games on pretty much all of these new MacBook models, I can say with confidence that if you want to play games on a MacBook, that you should probably not do this on the entry model. You should at least have 16 gigabytes of unified memory and at least a 10 core GPU as there have been plenty of games that have failed to run on MacBooks with 8GB of RAM, but so long as you have more than 8GB of unified memory, for the most part, I found that a lot of these games will run. As there is no coincidence that MacBooks that have the exact same M3 chip, but have slightly higher amounts of unified memory, have been able to run these games and run them quite well. And for the most part, you're not going to need anything more than 16GB of unified memory, as the law of diminishing returns is in full effect. And if you are wondering, I lowered the resolution to 1200 by 800 and here are the frame rates that I got across the board. As I mentioned earlier in this video, I am working on my 15 inch MacBook Air gaming video and I am yet to upload videos showcasing what it was like to play games on the Mac spec 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro models. And I've also got to upload video showing what it was like to play games on the M2 Ultra Mac Studio. If you haven't done so already, then be sure to subscribe, clicking that bell icon to be notified of when I upload any of my new videos. If you've got any questions or if there is anything further that you would like to see tested on these new Macs, then be sure to let me know by hitting me up on my social media, links to which can be found down below in this video's description. Once again, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care and have a good one.